So I don't want to go into details about this. But Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu and one is, is one of the foremost and one of the most elevated and, and, and elite of the Sahaba fraternity. Son-in-law of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cousin of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the younger, the first youth to accept Islam. Right? And he, there is great excellence that is mentioned in the hadith about him. His Salatul Asr, knowing the fact that the Salatul Asr is going to get qaza. And there the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is resting on his, on his thigh. So what he should have done is he should say that the priority is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Priority is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sharia and command and divine ordinance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one is exempted from it. But he knows, he knows the rule. Obviously, we don't know the rule better than he does. Because the rule was taught to him on whom the Quran was revealed. So he knows the rule. He knows the rule better than us. There you find this action of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, watching the sun and watching the face of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Now he had two glowing things in front of his vision and he had an option what to select. So he opted to select the glowing face of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was locked onto the face of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa knowing the fact that a first duty of Allah is going to be uh, missed. So intentionally what he did was instead of waking the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up, getting him up from the sleep and telling him, you are resting while my salah is becoming qaza. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you taught us to fulfill the first duty. So I want to fulfill the first duty. So, so you have to get up. Because I, <coughs> I cannot let you sleep here and perform my salah. So he opted the opposite. He said, Ya Rasulullah, rather you sleep. If I disturb you, there is no qaza for it. If, if I disturb you, there is no qaza for it. But if my salah is missed, there is a qaza for it. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh opted on that and the sun set it and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained on his lap. Time of Maghrib arrived, has arrived and the tear because of the decision was so intensive. He had a great impact on the human body. A time of very severe conditions that is one of the characteristics of a human being that he will start shedding tears. Because, you know, it, it is very tense. These tense moments do happen in the life of an individual. You will experience these things uh, maybe in a different mode or different circumstances. However, a tear dropped on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's cheek and you know the nature of tear when it leaves the body, the body temperature, you know the top temperature and that heat got the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up and he opened his eyes and he said, what is your problem? Why are you crying? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is my problem. <laughs> the reason why I am crying is that my salatul asr is qaza. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should have said, should have said in normal circumstances, if somebody regard the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an ordinary human being, maaz Allah astaghfirullah, which he is not, he is a human, not an ordinary human being, then he would have said that, I say, Ali, it's time for qaza, you must, you must read your qaza salana, why are you crying? It won't help, you have to get up and read your qaza. No, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say that. That would, that, that, that would be the normal reaction of an ordinary human being. But he is a human being, one of its kind, never, there's no similarity to him, there's no comparison to him. He is such a unique, independent and perfect human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created one second to none. There is no comparison to him. He says, Ali, do you want to read your asr? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala says, Ya Rasulullah, yes, I want to read my asr. Now, the, the mode that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala adopted, this is what I want to draw your attention to. 
is that contemplation about whether must I get the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam up and read my asar or leave the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to rest and I will make my qaza. This is known as a form of mujahida. This is what the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, was requested on the night of, of Laylatul Barat, the fifteenth nisf al-Shaban. Laylatul Nisf al-Shaban, when Sayyidina Jibril, Jibril arrived by him and said, Ya Rasulullah, engaged in, in mujahida. What I want to draw your attention to, what is the station and status of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the life of a Muslim who has to make mujahida? Your salah is mujahida, is part of mujahida, fasting is mujahida. Giving zakat is mujahida. Going for hajj is mujahida. Reading Quran al kareem is mujahida. Giving alms and, and, and feeding the poor, all are forms of mujahida. The end result is there is one, one goal in all these type or any type or every type of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mujahid. Jihad. Either you do jihad physically or you do jihad uh, mentally or you do jihad spiritually jihad the biggest jihad in Islam is what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said after the most decisive war in, 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 in Badr when they were victorious returning home with victoriously in the state of victory the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said min ila jihadil akbar. now we return from the small jihad Imagine that, 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 that decisive battle was Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarded as a small jihad. And when they, uh, the Sahaba now are returning from the battlefield to the serene environment and peaceful environment of their home, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there says that that peaceful serene environment that you are thinking of, you, you are going home, going back to your family and going to rest and be in a normal life, that is a big jihad. Uh, this is what we don't understand. That big jihad that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is referring to is jihad akbar which is the real mujahida. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala in that state and that experience that he is making mujahida in contemplating what is right, what is wrong, what should I do, what should I not do. This is, this is only, this is one of the constitutions of jihad. Must I do this or not? Must I steal this or not? Must I interfere with this or not? Must I uh, uh, buy this uh, stolen stuff or not? Or must I uh, usurp the, the wealth of a certain person and so on and so on? The contemplation when you are in that state and at the moment the purity of the soul gives you the right decision. When the purity of the soul affects the purity affects or joins forces with the purity of the heart, then it gives the signal to the mind whether you should do it or not. It, says, it is an internal transaction in the physical body which is totally spiritual and that is a form of mujahida in Islam. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu is mujahida, Asar Salah, which Salah? Salat al-Wusta, the, the center Salah which is of great importance. مَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةَ الْعَصْرِ فَقَدْ حَبِتَ أَعْمَالِ Hadith of Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who has made his salatul asr, who has made his salatul asr, qaza intentionally has, has indeed washed out, away all his past good deeds. So make one asr salat qaza, intentionally, you wash away all your past good deeds. Another hadith of Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةَ الْعَصْرِ مَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةَ الْعَصْرِ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ one who makes his asr salah qaza intentionally is like committing kufr. You don't become a kafir, it's like similarity, comparison. Is like committing kufr, it means it's such a very, such an important salah and such a uh, uh, great salah <coughs> and such a big sin to leave it. However, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu's mujahida, what was his mujahida? What was the end result of his mujahida? What, why did he take such a big decision to let his salah asr become qaza uh, 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 and, and not disturb the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the end result of all mujahida and the conclusion and the goal of your mujahida in your life 
is the pleasure of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu If you please, if you please Rasulullah sallallahu alayka wa sallam, indeed you have pleased Allah. Because his pleasure is the pleasure of Allah. And if he is annoyed with you, then Allah is definitely annoyed with you. So the idea is to now go back, go back to our mujahida and focus. How much do you desire or they are, if you're a, if you're a devout, devout Muslim and you ought to be a devout Muslim, every moment you should be thinking, how did the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam glorious face look like? Imagine, visualize it. Try and bring it into your vision. Try and capture it and focus yourself to get a glimpse of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You lay live for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. What is the ultimate? Sayyidina Khaja Ay Khaja Gan, Khaja Gharib Nawaz, Mu'inuddin Chishti Ajmeri radiallahu an, the great Sufi master, the great Qutb and Ghaus of his time. The great wali of Allah, the great arif of Allah, unanimously agreed by all the mashayikh, awliya, salihin, ulama, a'imma, and all the Muslim, unanimously agree that he is the highest ranking wali in the Indo-Pak subcontinent. There's no dispute about it. He says, this world is of no value. This world is of no value if Malak al Mawt was not created. <laughs> Amazing. You know, a, 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 a Sufi master, he's, he, he belongs to the mystical dimension of Islam and his words are always very mystical and mysterious. He says this world is of no value if Malak al Mawt was not created. He says all the transactions and happenings of this world is worthwhile because Malak al Maut is created. I mean, it's very difficult. If he had put a full stop there, he would not have understood what he said. So the disciples asked him, Why do you say such thing? He said, Because the ultimate goal of a mu'min and of a true believer of the Ummah of Sayyidina Rasulullah is to be in his company is to have a vision of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as to get close to him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Many other ayats of the Holy Quran and Hadith al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remind us about this. So, he says, the ultimate is that you want to see the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you want to make ziyara your Nabi in his company. He said there is no guarantee in this world whether you will ever have a glimpse of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or not. There's no guarantee. You can, some people are privileged, some are, some are very lucky that they make ziyara of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while they are alive, while they are in the dunya, they either do it uh, spiritually in a dream and many are blessed with being physically in his presence. It's Hayat al Nabi, that's a subject on his own. But the fact of the matter is that they, they, they do make ziyara of the Nabi. So, the, the fact here is that there is no guarantee. Have you any guarantee? Or I don't have, nobody has a guarantee that he will be blessed with the vision of the Nabi. He said, But when you die, when Malak al Maut takes your soul out, when you go in the grave, you are guaranteed to see the Nabi. When the angels are going to come and ask you, Man Rabbuka, who is your Lord, the angel, the Munkar Nakir, that will come and ask each and every person that dies in a grave, who is your Lord, what is your religion, and then he'll point out to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do you have, what concept do you have about this man? Right? Then the, you will see Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your grave. That is the day of Eid. That's a day of ziyara. That's the biggest, very important day in, in, your, in, in, in the life of, of any individual. That he will see the glorious and sacred face and blessed face of Sayyidina Mustafa وسلم, beaming with all his glory and, 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 and blessed with divine beauty. 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a manifestation of Allah's glory you will see. And he says that, Sayyidina Gharib Nawaz says that,